So welcome to a new positivity video uh, series, which is called Once Upon a Pandemic. So we're going to share some stories. We're going to share some tips and advice, and hopefully we can all help each other along through this lockdown number three and hopefully the last one. And I want to welcome my first guest, Alana Kirk. And Alana is an author, a journalist. She's a life coach and a mother. So she's got a range of stuff that she does. And welcome, uh, Alana. Thank you so much for joining me. Thank you, Yvonne. And can I just say well done you for doing this? Because what, what we need right now is... is a reminder, especially when you switch on the news every day, to have a bit of positivity in our lives because it's yeah. so important. So oh, well for done. sure. Thank you. Now, I'm going to, I, I, I'm just going to read out a little post that you read. I think it was on Twitter and it just resonated with me so much. Um, feeling brain berserk. I'm literally zigzagging between 15 scattered thoughts and to do's and not achieving anything. And then you posted that you were taking it hour by hour, not day by day. That's gone. It's actually hour by hour because we both have children at home. We work. We're busy. So I, I just really resonated with me. That's so difficult for people at home at the minute. So maybe we're going to share some yes. advice that you can share with your coaching that you've done that might help people at home. So, I mean, how are you staying positive at the moment? Well, and I actually think it's probably one of the most important gifts I've given myself over the last few years is this learning to actually take control of my thoughts and yeah. my life, as opposed to feeling like everything is driven by the external. And I think we get that feeling that sometimes our lives are all about reacting to what's mm -hmm. happening around us, the external, what people are saying or external events, whereas actually, if we learn to manage the internal, it doesn't matter what's happening all out here. Mm -hmm. Once we've got a hang of this inside, we're we're back in the driving seat yeah I wrote that tweet last week so did I felt like I was just getting back into sort of the work mode after Christmas and obviously the news was all I mean it, it feels like we're living in the twilight zone at the moment yeah. every day you switch on the news you think is this you know is this real and it just I, I was kind of my I, I was literally laughing at myself because I was starting one thing a brain a thought would come into my head oh and I get a post-it note by the end of the day, I had about 40 post-it notes of half-formed thoughts. And I was jumping, as I was writing one down, my head was jumping to the next, including yeah. what's for dinner, followed by, oh, I must do the garden. Oh, and, yeah. I've, and then I must write, you know, and I laugh. And don't forget the kids as well. <laughs> bloody kids. But they always, I have this thing that, you know, I, I try and decide what I'm having for dinner in the morning. Oh, gee, you're well organised. I'm now homeschooling. I run my own business. There's a lot of stuff. Um, but I and often I don't do that. So uh, I always have this sort of um, jolt at about three o'clock in the afternoon where I go, oh, do I know what I'm making for the dinner? And if I know what I'm making for the dinner, I go, oh, thank goodness. Yes. But if I don't, I'm like, oh, no, I've now got to dedicate time and energy to figuring out what's in the fridge. So I just love that. One of my greatest joys at the moment is that jolt at three when I suddenly go, oh, no, I do know what we're having. <laughs> that decision oh, makes such today. a difference. Because we're always thinking of so many things all at once. Women multitask. It's just a Absolutely. natural thing that we do. So, And I'm a great believer if you put the quick work in first and actually take a lot of your decisions out of your day. Yeah. Decide first and foremost in the day. Like this is just obviously mother specific, but, you know, what, what's for the dinner? Yeah. You no, know, um, nearly the night before, what are you going to wear? Are you exercising to tomorrow? Put your exercise gear on first thing. Don't allow yeah. yourself to make that decision halfway through the day. Just put the gear on and then you're in it at least. And make as many decisions in advance as you possibly can. And then yeah. it allows you to flow into your... It's career. a lot of planning, isn't it? I know I got I plan, I planners coming out of the woodwork. I love yeah. a planner because you're like me, you're organized, you like to organize things. But I'm going to I'm going to caveat that by saying that I used to be a control freak and I used to be a perfectionist. And I, I call myself a recovering perfectionist. I've gone into recovery. Hello, <laughs> my name is Alana Park and I'm a recovering perfectionist. <laughs> We have I've that been. live now. <laughs> yeah. Because um, while planning is really important, and I do, when I say by making your decisions early, just get them out of the way. Yeah. Um, because I think it's also really important to let the day unfold. So I think if we get too caught up in, a, I should do this, I have to do this, here's my to-do list. A, we're not present doing what we're meant to be doing, but also we're, we're less adapt at, at, at sort of um, at, at adjusting when something goes wrong or just there, I'm trying to write something. My child's asking me yeah. to help with maths. 
I've got a deadline in my head. So it's like being able to go, okay, adjust, adjust, adjust. I think it was, well, it was Charles Darwin who said, the survivor of the fittest doesn't actually mean the physically fittest yeah. teacher. It's the teacher that can adapt best to its environment. Mm. So we are having to adapt constantly yeah. to new environments right now. And mm. it is being able to have that planning head in your mind, but mm. also be free to be flexible. So, um, I mean, you're asking me, how do I keep positive? Yeah. I think, um, first of all, I don't always, and I think that is a, a thing to remember, that yeah. we are living in unprecedented times and under unprecedented um, pressure. Yeah. It's not always going to feel like you're on form. So yeah. that's okay. Allow yourself that. But just acknowledge to say that if I'm not feeling on form, what can I do? Mm. Be back in charge of yourself. Don't always be beholden to the external ex- yeah. uh, things that are happening. I think if we're very we, hard on ourselves as well, aren't we? I, I, I'm, I'm definitely like that. Yeah. Give yourself a break. Yeah. And um, so the things that I keep positive are this is a little coaching technique. Yeah. I actually Great. on my website, um, as I call them the, the midlife hacks, they're little short videos. And this is one of them. And I do it a lot with myself and I do it mentally, but you can also do it physically writing it down. It's called CIA. Yeah. And we're not calling in the feds, but um, what can I control? What can I influence? And what do I need to accept? Mm, Very good. Yeah. Often we spend a huge amount of time and our energy on the things that we have to accept quickly. Like it's raining today. I wanted to go for a run, but you, you, you get wind up about the rain Mm. instead of accepting as quickly as possible. It's raining. Now I go back into your areas of power. What can I control? What can I, Mm. what can I have to, and we spend a lot of energy trying to change things we can't. So that acceptance piece, CIA, really important. Accept quickly the situation. You don't have to like it. You definitely don't have to like the situation. But the quicker you accept, this is my reality, you get back into what can I control and what can I influence for myself. And and are those videos on your website, Alana? On my website. But that's CIA. I use it all the time. I'm in the middle of something. A kid comes in. Yeah. And their urgency is obviously more important than any of your urgencies. I quickly CIA it. Do I have to accept or can I put that, you know, what is urgent? What is the reality of this particular moment? And then back in and go, what can I control about it? What can I influence? Yeah. I think the thing for me, certainly over the last year with lockdown that has kept me the most positive is, and I would do this a lot with coaching anyway. And, but I think I don't even do it as a coaching tool. What is my highest value for today? Or what is my highest value for, I remember I was doing a live video at the time. I was I was going live, uh, doing a video, streaming a workshop thing, and all the notifications started coming down in my phone on the 12th of March last year. School's closed, school's closed, school's closed, school's closed. And I'm literally live, and I'm trying to continue my conversation while seeing on my screen that the schools were about to close last March. And um, I remember the kids coming home from school, and we were facing into this first lockdown, which we thought was only going to be a few weeks. Um, And I remember just having the foresight to think to myself, okay, okay, this is serious. Now, what is my highest value going to be over the course of the next few weeks? It wasn't, are the kids getting eight hours of school? That was maybe two or three. It wasn't, we're all going to, I have to get X amount of work done. It wasn't, my highest value for me was, at the end of this, we're going to have a sane, happy, functioning family. Mm. And whatever your highest value is, so it might be, I'm going to be fit and healthy at the end of this, yeah. or I'm going to be, have whatever you decided. But once you have that yeah. guiding light, mm. it, it colors every decision you make. Mm. So therefore, if something happened where the kids were, uh, something was going on or, 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 or there, was a, there was an opportunity, if you like, for tension around, do they get exercised or do we do an extra hour of school or whatever yeah. it might my guiding light was a fa- sane, happy, functioning family. Yeah. So I did what suited that guiding light. Mm. And that might be, do you know what? We're all going to take the afternoon off and watch a movie. Yeah, I know. I think pre- people as well with the homeschool and under pressure. I know last year I, I did it for a month and I was so stressed out with everything that was going on. And I stopped because I was putting so much pressure on myself and I, I stopped it. I had to. I just and I, I would look to people on social media, talk, social media talking about the pressure of homeschooling. I mean, don't put that pressure on yourself. I actually did. A, as if, if you want to follow me on Instagram, it's yeah. uh, at Midlife Coach. And I actually did a, a post yesterday about uh, the, the greatest lesson you can teach your children right now is how to cope in yeah. a challenging situation yeah and that is with self-care 
efficiency. Yeah. And, you know, that's not to say, you know, don't do it well, do it well, but, but, but do it with grace and, and yeah. courage and, yeah. and self-care. We're not teachers. And the thing that I said in the post was, you know, no doubt every one of us will be saying to our kids, Look, just do your best. Yeah. Don't ask me for anything more than your best. Mm. You know what? Say that to yourself. Yeah. I think we forget to do that, don't we? Don't asking anything of you but your best. And today your best might just be taking three things off the to-do list, doing two things well, and then actually yeah. connecting with everybody to make sure we're all surviving. Exactly, but yeah. Me, I think is, what... it's set your highest value, set your highest yeah. goal, whatever that might be. Mine was a safe, a safe, functioning, happy family. That colored every decision I then made. Yeah. Um, I didn't let work then take the priority. I yeah. didn't let school take the priority. I didn't although often in moments they did mm. but that's because then you're when you're they see that you're not panicking though they won't panic I think I think my my kids my twins are seven I'm young and I've got an 18 year old my twins will look at me and if they see me panicking they panic it's just a natural thing so I think it is to stay calm is definitely top of that it, list. my little one always says oh you're so dramatic <laughs> I said, the schools are closing oh you're so dramatic I'm like well no actually I've been listening to you the schools are closing but um, but it's, it's it's really it's it's really easy to let the panic and the external constantly yeah. control us so yeah. the two things are set your own highest value whatever that be yeah. so that might be if you're on your own Mm. Your highest value might be making connections every day. Yes, absolutely. If you're living with a partner, it might be, you know, live and let live. Yeah. So therefore, it's not always about winning the battle. It's mm -hmm. about living. It's about being being in an environment that's working. Yeah. So once you set your highest goal, whatever that is, it colors every decision you make. Yeah, and it gives for you sure. A little guiding light. Yeah. But also the CIA. That's Understand a good one. Yeah. Every situation you can accept quickly. And wake up and look, you know, I think routine is good as well. If you can do it, if you can get oh, up and do, do a routine, I think it's key. Yeah, you have to. For various reasons, either their kids have left home and their marriages have ended. To the yeah. really live, and or they've left their main job and setting a routine on Monday to Friday. Like, goodness me, even after Christmas there. Yeah. I was really glad to get a sort of feeling of Monday to Friday again. Yeah. Just so yeah. I could actually really enjoy Friday night because... Yeah. It felt like a, a let the days like, kind of roll into each other, don't they? You know, and it has done for the last nine, ten months and more yeah. now. I think yeah. the most important thing is really, um, like I said in that post, if your mind is sparking off, I have this other little thing called the five minute mindset mm. is just give whatever you're doing, whether that's a piece of work, an email, helping your child with homework, hanging out the laundry, whatever it is. Give it your full attention for five minutes. Yeah. And then it's done. And then you give your next attention yeah. for five minutes. Yeah, exactly. It's amazing how much it just calms your head down, actually. Yeah. Right, for five minutes, I'm only going to focus on this email. Yeah. I know, because the I'm head can go like a washing machine. I better yeah. have to do this, I have to do that. So it is. Yeah, five. That's I've, a good learned, one. I've learned mm -hmm. to meditate for want of a better word, when I hang out the laundry, because it used to be exactly that job. I, I do it really quickly. I hated it. Um, whilst thinking of other things. Yeah. And I force myself now to look at every sock, to look at every pair of pants, <laughs> to look at every, to fold every t-shirt. And it actually, ca it's Calms a meditation. Mm. So instead of something that I've got to get over, it's something I actually mm. give it, giving it all. And it just actually clears your brain. Yeah. It sounds counterintuitive that you're clearing your brain when you've got so many things to think about, but actually yeah. just focusing five minute mindset on each piece is, yeah. is really yeah absolutely that's a good idea I know you have um you've got your midlife marker workbook on your website yeah I suppose is there any tips that would work with lockdown with your coaching yeah I, I know I you've shared a few there now but you know from that workbook maybe there's something extra um I that's it there actually it's free Brilliant. it's on the website yeah I've seen it. Um, Very good. do you know what that is that is just a re resource for someone I work specifically with women in midlife although I do yeah. work with men too but it's really it's a lovely opportunity for you to just sit and think about what it is that you want for your life, separate yeah. to all the roles that you play. Mm. What do you want for you, the person? And I think a lot of women forget that there, there's a role for them to play their own life, yeah. never mind the other roles. Yeah. So the midlife marker is just taking time 
to assess how do you actually want your life to feel? What are your achievements? What are the things you want to look at? Um, but there's loads of other resources on there. There's lots of blogs, there's videos. There's yeah. a nice course and it's only 40 euro, but it's, it's a little 15 minute video and it's called My Midlife Daily Five. And it's just a really nice way of setting non-negotiable negotiable elements mm. of your day. Mm. So my, my five non-negotiables are move, learn, connect, nourish and create. So every day I have to move, mm. nourish myself in some way, yeah. create and some time writing, learn, I love learning and connect. I work yeah. from home and I make sure I externally connect. So those are my five non-negotiable elements. Yeah. And I think it's really important, again, those guiding lights just to help prioritize your time. Yeah. Um, well, I think the workbook could work for any age, couldn't it really, Alana? Absolutely. Yeah. And there's things that make your day work for you. Otherwise, yeah. you spend your life yeah. working for your days. That's um, brilliant. Yeah, that's a good one. I, I mean, and where can people find all these um, this information on your website? My website is yeah. themidlifecoach.org and my Instagram is at midlifecoach. Great. But look, I think in terms of positivity, these are really tough times. Mm. I said yesterday on my one of my posts is, you know, you're not finding it hard. It is hard. Yeah. Um. So being positive for me is about trying to be less driven by the external yeah and trying to center yeah on the in, and it, in your own home as well once you've a safe I mean, environment my biggest there. mantra will be for a few minutes stop thinking about what you need to do yeah and think about what you need yeah great thanks alana i just want to say uh, i just want to ask you a very a random question i'm going to ask all my guests if you, I know you've written The Sandwich Years, which was a fantastic book. If you're looking for a good memoir to read, it's a snapshot of a time in your life. It's amazing about having young kids and looking after an older parent. I'm sure there's lots of people out there that would be very familiar with this. So I, I adore the book. So you. if you had an autobiography of Indiv your life in general, can you, can you say in three words what it would be a title? Uh, courage, challenge, choice. Three C's. Um, I think my uh, realizing that we have agency and choice is one of yeah. the biggest things women need to understand. Yeah. Uh, challenge is a part of life, but it's also about challenging ourselves to step yeah. outside our comfort zone all the time. And courage, I think life takes courage at the best of times. Sure um, and I think women just never recognize how courageous they actually are. Yeah. Uh, and that, I think that's a lovely way to end our video of positivity. And thank you so much uh, for thank your tips you. and advice. And you've got all, I'll put all the links to your social media and website in the post. Thank you, Alana, for your time. For I mean, you're, you're, the, what you give out to the community is really positive. Oh, thank you so much. It's all about helping each other and supporting, isn't yeah. that it? Thank yeah. you so much, Alana.